We hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. I want to turn to 2 Corinthians 10, 5 as our text. And uh, this is not going to be a negative sermon by any means. But uh, I want to see the contrast between of things that are happening in our world. And uh, as Charles Dickens said, Dickinson said, it's the best of times and the worst of times. I've never seen a time when we've had more conveniences, more knickknacks and pro things that we can use to save us uh, time and effort. And yet, it seems like we never get enough of it. And of course, I... Uh, anybody getting enough of the politics going on? Oh, my, the best of times, the worst of times. And that's one <laughs> of, of the worst. But anyway, when we come, thank God that we are his children. Amen. And that God has put his hand on us. Because a lot of things that are happening in this world, we can go into the rock. You know, it, uh, there Moses up on the mountain, he asked, oh God, why don't you, why don't you just cover me, <laughs> okay? And Jesus, and God said, I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock yes. and cover you there with my hands. And sometimes we just need God to put us in the cleft of the rock and just cover us with his hands. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that God is so, so good. I want to talk to you of tonight about casting down imaginations. But not stopping there, but put in the right kind of thought structure into your life. Amen. Because we're living in a time where there's all kind of media going on. I like to call it stinking thinking. You know, I used to say that... Uh, that the mind over matter means that we can, by our mind, control what's going around us. But I think, really, the mind is the, is the matter. That's where we're having our problems with our Christian walk is in our minds. Because the devil would love to blast us with thoughts that are not of, of him. Amen. Let's just do the text and then I'll let you sit down if I'm going to be sitting down. Okay. Casting down imaginations. You ever have any trouble with the imaginations? And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity. This is really the words that I want to say. Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We've got to learn to do that. That's not easy to do. The media is blasting everywhere. Amen. You may be seated. We've got media coming in every direction. And uh, voices, different voices calling here and there and everywhere. And uh, a lot of, I've heard it said that you are what you think. Which brings us around to the fact that what we think is what we look on. And what we read. And what we listen to. And when you look at what's around us, the, even the music. Now when I say the best of times, the worst of times, there's no bet, bet time that there's been any better music if you look for it. Or any worse music. Down in the gutter music. And that, that's what our young people are listening to, and not only our young people. You know, I, I was out there teasing some people about the fact, about, um, about the fact that they were looking at this. 
But somebody reminded me, it's not just the young people. We've caught the bug too. We've got to be put in quarantine and keep us from coming down with stuff that's on this. This so it's the the what we see on our phones, what we are seeing on our cell phones, our TVs, our computers. Amen. You can see the worst thing on the computers that you see anywhere. And, but here's the good question. If we are what we look upon, and if we're really on what we read, and if what we read and look upon is what we think on, we are in trouble. Lord, help us to control what we see and what we read. Amen. Nobody else is going to do it for it. Amen. I remember in Papua New Guinea, Brother Arthur was preaching. He was preaching, I, I told you this before, I think, about that he was sleeping on the foreign field and a rat came across, right across and jumped across his face. And he grabbed his pillow and grabbed it in there and he smothered it. <laughs> and his message was, nobody is going to smother your rats for you. You're going to have to smother your own rats. Amen. Amen. And you're going to have to control your own mind. Here in this, it tells about casting down imaginations. Now, imagination is one of the greatest things that God has given us. Amen. That we can see visions and we can see dreams and and uh, we don't even have to be asleep to see those things. One of the greatest inventions comes from the imagination that God. In fact, God said, well, on the Tower of Babel, he said, listen, I've got to come down there and I've got to do something to get separate these people because they, they will do anything that they can imagine. Now, if God saw that as a probability and a possibility, that is true. Mankind has the, the ability to do wondrous things with this, with this mind. But also, we can think of, of some of the grossest as things also and the most negative things. And so, Lord, help us to cast down our imaginations. Now, if you know anything about casting and fishing, I, I always say I want to fish, but I never have time for it, it seems like. But I tell you, when you go there, what you do? You cast. And that's a, something you do on purpose. And you do it in a certain direction, you hope. <laughs> and you hope a certain place. Okay. And so we're casting these imaginations down. Not just any imagination, but the imaginations that exalt itself against our God. Anything that is wrong, anything that's dirty, anything that's not of God, amen, has got to be cast down. Amen. And so we have the fact here that we got to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You ever, you ever thought, that, what, Lord, whatsoever thing I see, whatsoever thing I think today, whatever God comes in my mind, God, control it. Help me to be, bring it into captivity, into the obedience of you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my God. Yeah. You know, I'm not above this. My, if I've had any problems in my Christian walk, it's with my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I could get an amen from a bunch of you. Yeah. Maybe if you're men, if you're men, you, you yeah, okay. 
You women, I don't know about you, but I, I hear that you want, <laughs> that you want op equal opportunity, and, and you're getting it. But, <laughs> but we men, we have problems with this mind sometimes. We've got to bring it into obedience. Amen. Now, the Bible says in James that we draw into sin when we're drawn away with our own lust and, and deceived. We conceive in our own lust. And when that is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So when you go back through it, where does it come from? It comes from within. Amen. God, clean us up. Help us to bring us into captivity, Lord. Every thought. And to, uh, because we don't want to go down that, that road. Because uh, we've got to control our thoughts and our lusts. Lust really is only but desiring something that does not belong to you. Did you know that? Amen. Amen. That same, a lot of th those same thoughts within marriage is beautiful. But outside of marriage is not beautiful. That's true. It's lust, okay? And uh, so we got to make certain that we are not looking down. We're not going down to get the negative, the things that are not of God and, and that are of base. You know, talking about some in the Old Testament, Lot. The Bible says Lot looked down, Lot went down, and then Lot went in to Sodom. And that is the trend that if you're not careful, even those of us that are Christians that are here tonight, even our Sunday night crowd, okay, we've got to make certain that we don't look down. What are you looking on? What are you reading? What are you listening to? Amen. If you look down, very likely you're going to go down. And if you go down, very likely you're going to go in. Amen. Into Sodom and a place that he would never have gone if he just stayed up there in the hills. Amen. Look at, look at King David. The Bible says in the year that when kings go out to war, David stayed home. And what did he do? That's when temptation comes into our lives most of the time. When we're not doing something constructive, doing something that lifts up, something that builds up. He got, so David stayed home the time of the year when kings went out to war. And then, and so he went up on his rooftop and he looked, what did he do? He looked down. And there he saw Bathsheba bathing down on the rooftop of her house. Okay? And that's when thoughts came in his mind. And he conceived these thoughts. And then these thoughts bore fruit. And he called her and came in. And most darkest time of his life, in fact, he, never, he and his family never got over that. When you look at the family, that was a problem they had forever, it seemed like. Amen. Yeah. Peter, talk with dear old Peter, what happened when he was walking on the water? He would have been okay if they kept his eyes on Jesus. But boy, the storm is there, and he's walking on the water, and he looks down and sees those waves. <laughs> I, I think I'd have fallen too. <laughs> Oh, Lord, save me. Save me. Samson, think of some of the Old Testament people there. Here he was, a prophet, a prophet in Israel. But he could not keep his eyes where they should be. And his parents said, what's wrong with you? Can't you find a beautiful young lady in Israel? Why do you have to look down in the in Philistine? In the Philistines, for a wife. And he I don't think he was even wanting a wife. He just wanted a lustful thing. And yeah. so he had two or three of them, whatever it was. And what happened? It sucked his strength. 
It stuck his blessing. It wasn't until he was blinded and then he put it into the place where they mocked him and he said, oh God, if you give me one more chance. How many are glad that God gave you one more chance? He gives us one more chance. God, just give me a little more strength, Lord, like you gave me before. Oh, God, this one time. I don't care if I survive or not. Just give me one more. Amen. You know, God has done that to me many times. I don't know how many times I've come down to the altar and wept before God. And God has always taken me back. He's always taken me back. Amen. In Proverbs 23, 7, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What are your thoughts on the innermost being? What is the thoughts inside of you? Amen. In Proverbs 12, 6, the thought of a righteous man is right. Oh, God, make me righteous. Make me a righteous man, Lord. Clean me up, Lord. I pray. Captivate my thoughts. Keep them in the captivity, Lord. Help me, God. Amen. Amen. We find in Romans 12, 2, it says here, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. How do you keep control of this flesh? The answer is in verse 2. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. Okay? So that we can prove what is good. 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 <laughs> you want something to think about? Think about good things. God is good, and most people say, come on, all the time. He has good thoughts all the time toward me, the Bible says. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. God, renew my mind. Refresh my mind. Wash my mind continually, that we might, ye might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How many want the acceptable and perfect will of God? Yeah. I know that in this place, there's those of you that want a deeper walk with God, to walk with him in pureness, yeah. oh God. And thank you, Jesus. Amen. So let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We're talking about bringing our minds into captivity this morning, amen, or this evening. And that one of my favorite scriptures, I remember so much when I was in southern Brazil and my boy was out on the streets. You know, we, we have a men's group that meets on Tuesday, and I appreciate those men. They are the precious friends of mine. But, you know, going around the circle... As we do, just about every one of us has a boy that needs to get closer to God, that needs God desperately. Amen, amen, amen. And so uh, when I was down there and I heard that, I was so down. I told you this last time. I was, I was just at the bottom of the barrel. Brother Walmer came over to my little apartment, but they had put me up in there. And there we prayed, sought God for three, four hours. And the scripture there that God gave me, he hath not given me the spirit of fear, yeah. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I, I've quoted that thousands of times. And I bring it up tonight because that is so close to my heart. God, I pray, Lord, you have not given me a spirit of fear. Fear is part of your stinking thinking. My poor mother, she was a godly woman. I don't know where it came from. I, don't, I think she was uh, in depression in her 
uh, when she was in her 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s, she was completely captivated by fear. Oh, God, help us to clear our minds. God has not given you the spirit of fear. That is not of God. You can rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know what your fears are, but my fears were a lot. I told you some of the ones last time. But I, I've had fears in my younger life. I want to thank God that God has delivered me from much of my fears. I told you last time the greatest of all fears that I had, I told John that today, fear of speaking in front of people. <laughs> I don't I don't fear it anymore. <laughs> Why? Because God has delivered me from that fear. I remember in Northeast India getting up and speaking to five thousand young people without not even a twinge of fear. That did not happen by chance, folks. God did that in my life. So that is one of the things that we captivate, that we get into captivity, bring it into our control. We don't have to live with that for the rest of our life. Amen. Amen. And then my favorite scripture, along with the one before, and this one is one I say, go back to my title, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But I want to talk about Philippians 4. Yeah. Philippians 4 is my scripture. You can borrow it if you want to sometimes. But I want you to know. <laughs> Philippians 4. <laughs> Amen. And here it goes in. It starts out with rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord sometimes. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. If you repeat it, it must be important. We need to rejoice. Amen. That's having joy and having it again. Redo it. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen, amen. There, you know, one of the greatest things for you to cultivate is thanksgiving. You know, if you start to get into a negative spiral, then everything is wrong. Your wife is wrong. Your children are wrong. Your job is wrong. The church is wrong. And God's done me wrong. You, it, you can get into that. How many people have left the church over stinking thinking like that. No, what you do is rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Then he goes on to say, be not anxious. How many have anxiety? I'm glad that you got some confessions. Same, I tell you what, we'll get rid of our anxiety is rejoicing. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Amen. Anxiety. I think about the other, the other week, you know, it happens to us all. What do they call that panic uh, attack? Is that what they get? I think about three weeks ago, for no reason, I don't know. I just, I just woke up in the middle of the night with a panic attack, all here again, over my son. And I go and stew about it and have that, that negative feeling and everything. Phone down the next day, and here is job. He has a better job than he ever did before, and he's, and he's thinking about going to church, and maybe in church even tonight, and he's making more money than he ever did. And I thought he was going to be on the streets again. You know, that's stinking thinking that the devil put in me, okay? I should never have an anxiety attack. I need to learn to just, in fact, I, that may be the first one I've ever had. I hope it doesn't catch. 
<laughs> Amen. Be not, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known, made known unto God. It says in this scripture, we are to guard our, <laughs> amen. Then there's the word meaning guard. Actually, it really means garrison, 100 soldiers. Put 100 soldiers around your mind, amen. Guard it so you're not thinking about things that are not of God, things that are not pure, things that are not good. Amen. Lift up your eyes unto the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help cometh from the Lord. We made heaven and earth. Amen. I remember, I remember a lot of times I, I was coming home from my school and, uh, and I was going out Gleason Street and there there in Gleason Street, there's a, you can see Mount Hood in all of his purity and beauty, okay? But many times, I think there's one time, uh, I saw something that looked like a, a bag that had something in it, and I stopped, and I went over there and looked in the bag, and there's a bunch of trash, okay? But from that point on, a lot of times, my mind would be looking for trash when I could be lifting it up. To the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Lift up our eyes unto the hills. Put a garrison, put a garrison around our hearts and our minds. Don't be anxious for everything and anything. And I love this one. Let the peace and the peace of God which passes all understanding. And I think this is where the word guard comes in. And garrison your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. There's nothing better than peace. 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 <laughs> Amen. We need peace in this world. We need peace in our government. We need peace in our families. Our families are going through stress like, you, like you've never seen before. Oh, God, protect our families, every one of them. Protect our children, Lord. Protect our marriage, God. Do this. Give us peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Bring this to a conclusion, but there's one verse that you cannot you cannot leave without getting failure okay how many people can quote it finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are a good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise Come on, so I said it. Think on these things. Now, I think that this could be one of the greatest media rating systems. And pro okay? Every time you look at a TV program, you ask yourself, is it true? Is it honest? Is it just? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it a good report? Is there virtue in it? Is there praise in it? Think on these things. In fact, if they started to, Hollywood would shut down. There wouldn't be any movies. There wouldn't be any videos. There wouldn't be any. I, I find myself more, more and more watching the, the travel logs on public television. <laughs> it's about the only good thing. Even the news is cruddy. And I, and I was a news fan. I mean, I had to see the 4 o'clock news. I don't know if I... 
<coughs> 4 o'clock and the 5 o'clock. And then again at the 6 o'clock. And then on public television, the 7 o'clock news. And you know something? I've cut out about half of that. I'm not down to where I need to be, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm a long way from it. <laughs> but even that, even the, even the weather reports aren't good here in Portland. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Except this week. Except this week. <laughs> Last week wasn't good. And my, daughter, my sister came down and my nephew came down just to be with me in the cabin. And we couldn't see Mount Hood one time. In fact, my sister said I lied. She said, she said, there's no Mount Hood there. <laughs> okay. But those things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, praise. You know, we've got a lot to think on. Do you know there's a lot of good things in this world? There's a lot of good people. And these people a lot of times do some good things. They do. And, they, and so we, we've got to look around for those things. Now my daddy used to say about television, why look in the garbage can for, for a meal? <laughs> for something good. He said, all you'll find is leftovers there. Somebody wasn't laughing. <laughs> okay. And so a lot of times we look at we're looking in the garbage can. Try to find something to eat. I did see a little kid from Venezuela, and that's what they were doing. Going through the garbage dump. And oh how how sad that is. That's not of God. God didn't do that to Venezuela. People did that to Venezuela. Amen. Poor kids having to go through the garbage dump looking for something to eat. Lord, you know something that if you want to see something good, you look at someone with little kids. I, I love the little, the little boys and little girls. Sometimes the boys are a little antsy, but there's, there's, there's some that are, those little girls are so cute. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and I think the Van Beek girl is going to be the song leader one of these days. She gets it with it. <laughs> but aren't the kids beautiful? Pure, virtuous, and yet our society, when you look at them when they're in their later teens, many of them, I'm not saying, our girls good. You hang in there, girls. You hang in there, guys. But uh, when you see many of them when they're teenagers, they've been through the hoop. They've been experiencing things they never, ever should have experienced. They've seen things they never, ever should have thought. They've thought thoughts that they never should. God never, never meant for them to do that. Amen. That is sin and sinful ways of thinking. Amen, amen, amen. And so here we find that this is what we can think of. If, if you don't have enough to think about, you find something true. When you go and talk to somebody about somebody, make certain it's true. And a lot of times, a lot of times it'd be best if you just left it alone because it may not be, it may be true, but not a good report. <laughs> amen. And so if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, think and talk on these things. Amen, amen. And then we got the, the fact in 3 John 2. You want to know God's, God's uh, prosperity doctrine? We talked about, Pastor talked about that last time. <laughs> what, yeah, gab it and grab it. I don't know. But no, but this is his. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, 
even as thy soul prospers. You want to have a healthy body? You have a healthy mind. Amen? And if you want a healthy mind, make certain your soul is healthy. And your soul is prospering. Amen? Amen, amen. So in, in conclusion, would you stand with me, please? I want to tell you something that maybe that you never, ever knew about. And that is this. In the garden, there were two trees. Most of us only know and think about the tree that Eve ate the fruit of. That was the tree of good and evil. And God said, you don't need to know evil. You don't need to be able to make a decision between good and evil. You just stay with me and you will be okay. But also in that garden, there was uh, the tree of life. And you find this tree again in the book of Revelation. In chapter 21, 22, there was a tree of life. Now, do you ever think of that Eve could have looked on and ate of the tree of life? Because the tree of life has leaves for the healing of the nations. Amen? And it had 12 types of fruit. Don't tell me God is mean. Do you ever go into the produce section and look on the fruit section and thought that Eve was looking and she got focused in on one when the whole bin upon bins of beautiful fruit are there. She could have eaten from any tree in the garden. She could have eaten from the tree of life. And when she felt sick, she could just go over and eat some of the leaves. Because in the end time, there's going to be a river. And that river of life. <laughs> Amen. That liver, river of life is going to be there. And by that river of life is going to be the tree of life. And there's going to be the leaves for the healing of you and I. The past will be in the past. We'll be thinking and enjoying everything that's true, everything that's honest, everything that's just, everything that's pure, everything that's lovely, everything that's virtuous, everything that you could praise. We'll be just up there thinking about those things and partaking of all the fruit, eating the leaves. They bring us health. Amen. Amen. I want you to think of the good things of God. God didn't do anything. He just wanted them to make a decision. I'm going to put this one tree here with fruit so that you have got to make a decision between that and me. But Eve looked at that. And of course, Satan was right there to bring all kinds of suggestions. But, uh, but here she could have had any fruit she wanted, any of the vegetables she wanted, anything she wanted to eat, she could have had. And yet she fixated on that which God said no. Sometimes I wonder in our own lives when God, and we know it, we may, we may go and, and get a relationship with somebody and in our heart, God said, no, oh, that person's not for you. And yet we get fixated and we go ahead 
and we, we marry or live together or whatever this world is doing, which is wrong. But yet, God had something beautiful for you. Young people, there is a lady or there is a man for you. Okay? Men and women, there's a job for you. Whatever you need, God is going to provide it. In Jesus' name. I want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I want this there playing and singing whatever song. I want you to come up to the front and I want you to thank God. Not for the one you couldn't eat, but I want you to thank God for the 12 you could have eaten. Come on up front and let's just thank God for being our friend.